Hi there, my name's Ian. I'm a PhD student at Sheffield Hallam University. And this is the third in a brief series of videos I'm producing, um, which will hopefully help those of us who need to use Microsoft Word in order to produce extended documents like theses and dissertations. So the intent within these few videos is to, to identify some of the features and the tips and the tricks that can be useful in helping us become more efficient and save some of our precious time. In the first episode, we looked at um, how different views can be used to be able to navigate through the document. In the second episode, we looked at the document itself and the, way, the ways it needs to be set up. Um, apologies if you did you look at that video and it finished rather abruptly at the end. Um, I'm using Screencast-O-Matic and because I'm so tight, I'm only using the free version, which is limited to 15 minutes. So I will try to get this one done within 15 minutes too. Uh, with that in mind, um, you will be now familiar with perhaps my rather crude title pages. Uh, I'm doing that so that I can hopefully get things done in a single take and reduce the time needed for video editing. So here we go, let's get started with styles and headings. Um, and I'll start the same way I did the previous one, which was to show, first of all, the navigation pane by going to the view menu and clicking on navigation pane. And here we saw that um, we can navigate through the document using these um, chapter and sub chapter headings. By clicking here, that takes us to the different places within the document. How do they get there? Because they're not there naturally, you have to put them in. And that's achieved through using, let's go back to the home tab for a moment, styles. You'll notice that chapter headings or section headings are formatted in a particular way, apparently formatted. One of the ways that I've seen colleagues do this, um, and, and it tends to be the way that we learn how to do things, is using the formatting tab. So if you want a heading to have a different format to the rest of the text within the body of the document, you usually highlight the word itself and give it a particular formatting. I'll give you an example of that by, first of all, I'm going to select my keyboards down here, by the way. Control A, that's now all the words that are in the document. I'm going to get rid of all the formatting and all the styles that are there. To do that, I need to pop open the styles menu and choose clear all. So you'll now notice that those headings and any formatting that's been applied has now gone. The headings are now back to plain text, or at least the normal text, as we can see over here. This is important. When you start creating your document, you may feel that the, whatever the default text is that's offered, you want a different one for the standard text. If you choose to start from the beginning by applying a particular formatting, you get through, as I've got here, 90 or 1,000 words and over several hundred pages, and then you find that that, can, that text won't work for the examination because of the regulations, or it won't print out particularly well and you want to change the whole thing. If you want to do control A like I did and change the format to, oh, I don't know, Cambria, Calibri, whatever, that's fine. But if you do that across the whole document, any local formatting you've done to the titles, to any indentations that you've put in, to any quotations, Anything like that will also have its formatting changed. A much better way to do that is to change styles. Because if you apply a style to any particular part of the document, and then later on you decide you want to change it, you can do so to once everywhere that that style has been applied within the document. We'll give you a for instance. So for example, Rather than formatting this to make this particular heading look bigger or bolder or whatever, like that, just undo that. The better way to do it is to use a style and apply the same style whenever you want that look and feel to be applied within the document. 
And the way to do that, the best way to do that, is using one of the headings within Word. So, for example, let's call that heading, or choose, heading 3. And you'll notice that immediately in the navigation pane, that then became available. Let's do it again on the next bit. So rather than applying formatting manually, use a style. You choose the same one, and that again appears within here. And now, not only have we applied these two different styles to these two different headings, we can now use them within the navigation of the document. That's got to be much better than applying it just for giving it a look and feel. It's now becoming an integral part of the document and useful to us. We don't have to keep that. We can change it to a different heading style. You notice it indents it slightly, so all of the sections that need to start off the same and have the same degree of importance need to have the same level of heading applied to them. So let's go back to abstract and also make that heading too. And working our way through the document, um, table of contents, we'll make that heading two as well. And elsewhere within the document, wherever we find a main chapter heading or a main section heading, we need to apply the same style to it. Now, the default styles that come with that particular installation of Word that you've got, you don't have to stick to. So if we go to heading two, which is the one we've got applied at the moment, you can see it's highlighted, and hover over it, you can see all the different um, formatting that's been applied, applied within that global style. So if, for example, we wanted our headings within the document to have a different font to the body text, we can do that over here it's by going to Modify. Now, when we do that, we get lots of different things that we can apply. We can't, well, I won't have time to go through them all, but the principle is what applies here. So let's say that we want a sans serif font like Arial or Calibri to be applied. Let's just change that to Arial. Uh, and we'll do it as simple as that for the moment. You can change all the other parts about it too, the color and so forth, the format, uh, the alignment and uh, line spacing and indentation and so forth. But for the moment, we'll just change it to Arial. And if we say OK, that's fine. Nothing happened over here in the navigation panel, but that text has changed. But now, when we go to forward, we can see that that style has been carried through. Because we applied the style to each of those headings, any change we make by modifying the style is applied globally throughout the document. That's really, really useful. So let's now go to somewhere else in the document. If I change to page view, I can scroll through to somewhere. I need a chapter start. That's the, there we go. And we apply to that heading two. That will also be aerial as well. And if we go back to headings, we'll see that's appeared in our navigation panel. That's a really useful and powerful feature that saves you so much time. One change applied globally throughout the document wherever you've applied that style. So remember what we were saying earlier on about trying to change the base text because it's not printing out properly? That, if I click in it, you can see the base text has normal style applied. It has a particular font. Oops. Hover. Stay there, mouse. A font and alignment and so forth. Let's try try changing the global style, modify, and let's say that we want that to be, maybe it specifies, maybe you're trying to squeeze more into the, the amount of space and your regulations allow you to have 11 point font. So we'll change that to 11, you can see that's made it a little bit smaller there, and we say OK, zoom. That's applied globally wherever we go to within the whole of the document. Wherever that style, the normal style has been used, you can see that's applied globally. I'm going to do Control Z and undo that. And then I'm going to navigate back to the beginning. Okay, so applying styles, really useful for applying global changes across the whole document just once by changing modify style. Um, 
The other thing you can do, one of the things that was useful for me was to have different kinds of quotations so you can set up your own individual styles. You know how sometimes you might want um, an indent quotes where you're quoting a particular author to be indented. Then one way to do that is to set up a specific style. I've actually done that if I remember rightly there. So if I highlight this chapter, let's say that's not just, sorry, this paragraph. If I want that to be, if that was a quotation, if I go to quote, but dump, that's applied the personal style that I created to do that. And that's been indented and it's got, and it's been italicized. Uh, so I'm just going to undo that and we'll show you how to do that. So if you go to the styles menu and go to uh, down to the bottom here, you've got a number of options available. You can see that that's the style inspector. That will just tell you what styles are available. Manage styles, we can create a new style within here. So if we go to manage styles, um, we've got the option to edit. And we've got the option to uh, modify particular styles. So for example, if we want a new style based on a particular one, so maybe the normal style is pretty much it, as it was for me when I was creating the quote style. I'm going to base this next style on normal, but it could be any of the others that you use as a base style. So we'll start off from there and go new style. You can see that it's picked up the same settings that that normal style had. It needs a new name, so we'll call this uh, Ian's quote, well, might not, not let me have the, the posture, but let's see what happens. Ian's quote, um, it's got <coughs> Garamond 12, and this time I'm going to italicize it. And I also want it to be indented, so I can do that from here. And that sticks in a particular indent. You might want to make it more subtle than that. You might want to, to distinguish the changes slightly. You can do that by opening up this format box and you've got lots of different far more subtle options within here so if i go to paragraph that was the indentation that was applied let's say i want it to be slightly smaller than that 0.8 centimeters um, we can do that from in here we can also change the line spacing more subtly we can add um, spacing after paragraphs um, line spacing sometimes in theses needs to be double you can do that within here um, so let's leave that as it is for the moment say okay and you'll notice that's oops <laughs> don't think i think i must have allowed the uh, line spacing to be double or multiple at three yeah no perhaps not so let's go to single again and go okay and now say okay and we've now got this new style that's appeared within the style menu so if we say okay to that and have a look over here somewhere we should find there it is in his quote so now if i go like that that's the quotation i want styled in a particular way click ok and you can see that's now got that new style compared with the other one which was slightly different crucially of course if we decide later on that we need to be able to change that we only need to do it once if we go to let's put it back on his quote go to there go to modify and we can now change that setting so maybe it wants to be a slightly bigger font or maybe it wants to be indented more or maybe it wants to be spaced the line space more we can change it globally across the whole document really really useful to be able to do that the other thing that you're able to do once you let me just undo the get that back to normal um, the other thing that's really useful about applying headings in particular is that as you can see they appear within the navigation pane if we go to our table of contents we can also put in a table of contents which is built using those headings so it's crucial that well, it's not crucial i've seen folks create tables of contents manually before but it's a really laborious process especially trying to put in those dots for the um well, I call it leading, it might be leading, uh, however you pronounce it. But we'll take a look at how to produce the table of contents and then adjust it and how powerful it is in the next video. Thanks for watching this one.
any comments, stick it below. Thanks very much.